It is Saturday, October 21st, 2023. This is Daniel, your host of Notice TV, Notice Television, putting you guys on notice, you know, giving you guys the news. So how do I start this? Um, <laughs> fornication, adultery, any kind of sexual immorality, defiling the marriage bed, fornication as in, you know, having sex outside of marriage, all of that is, is a sin in God's eyes. You're unclean. You're unpure. You're unsanctified. And that's that's I, that's what I believe a, a lot of men go go through. Um I know I know I have a, I'm a victim of it, of course. Um a victim of lust. You know, I just I just wanna you know <laughs> Not not to try to get too X-rated, but, you know, we have that urge to just want to f- mess around with anything that we see that's attractive, I would say. Well, I'm, I'm, and I'm just talking about a woman in my case, you know what I mean? <laughs> Even though I'm married, it's just like I have that lust inside me that just wants to mess around or you know and the bible makes it clear the god god's word makes it clear that we shouldn't we shouldn't do that we that's that's defiling the marriage bed and it's tough i know um ever since i started this walk uh last year it's just my eyes weren't open of course, I knew it was wrong, but my eyes weren't open to the fact that there's a reason why God has placed these commands and and these rules in place. You know, he's not going to he's not going to stop stop you from doing any sin, you know, what I mean, or committing any sin. He's not going to stop you, but he, he he's saying these rules and commandments just to stay away from these these temptations and these sinful natures for a reason you know um and you're gonna reap the consequences obviously if you if you're married or even if you're not married because if you're fornicating outside of marriage then you're susceptible you're susceptible i'm not even sure if i said that right that, that word susceptible <laughs> um to whatever consequence that that may arise with you being highly promiscuous men and women you are going to gain the consequences obviously god has foreseen the consequences of being promiscuous and and and, and running around giving yourself to any and everybody you know without without, without marriage Without a foundation, you know, God created man and woman, you know, and that's, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't place a rule that said that man should lie with man, man should lie with woman and other woman and other woman. No, he said, man, uh, when, when a man leaves his parents his father and mother he should be conjoined he should join a woman and the two should become one flesh let no man put asunder let no man separate this 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 marriage you know and that's the struggle we married men go through and 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 single men too we just sometimes we just don't know we we don't know the truth or we never knew the truth. We we most most likely were brought up by you know people that we grew up with. You know just to 
bang the next the next woman and, and have a lot of women and 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 have you know bodies we, we would call it bodies we, we got bodies we got females at our at our uh, at our arms and shoulders yeah you know what i'm saying we we got them you know what i mean that that was the whole mo that was the whole thing growing up like yo we gotta get we gotta get that girl we gotta get that you know that pretty little woman or something you know what i mean we we, we had we had that mindset growing up so so yeah i, I get it you know what i mean but now that i know the truth I don't want it anymore. I don't want that anymore. You know what I mean? That's first of all, that's that's breaking the Lord's commandments, his commands. If I know I love Jesus, I will keep his commandments, right? That's that's scripture. If I know I love Jesus, I will keep his commandments. If I know I if I know I love the Lord, I'm gonna keep his laws and commandments. And not defile the marriage bed or not fornicate. Without being married first, you know. So, so, so. What's the issue? Where's the where? Did, where does the issue lie? I mean, you know, a couple of months ago, right? A couple of months ago, and this, and I'm in the truth, right? I'm in the truth, and I, I, I know what's right from wrong. You know, I'm still studying, but I. I I already know what's right from wrong when it comes to lust and fornication and temptation and, and, and defiling the marriage bed or, you know, I, I know the truth now. You know what I mean? Because I've been reading the Bible. But a couple of months ago, right, I went to this to my family cookout. Um, I went by myself. I, wouldn't, I didn't go with my wife and kids. I guess they didn't want to go, but. I went over there to my family's house on my dad's side. Now, of course, my dad, he's hes my dad. If anybody knows my dad, he's one of them guys that love women, you know. And so I go over i go over to this cookout, and, of course, he's not there yet. But, he, he of course, he invited me over. But he's not there yet. So, I, you know, when I got there, I embraced my uncle. My uncle, it was at my uncle's house. Um, so I embraced my uncle and, you know, said, hey, hello, say he hello to everybody. Just greeted myself, well, greeting them, myself, and uh, just saying hello to everybody. It was my uncle and then another one of my uncles was there and then a few of my dad's friends was there and then, that's when my dad kind of showed up. He, 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 he didn't take long to show up, probably about uh, 30 minutes after I, I, I came. But, yeah, it was just, it, I would say it was maybe three, three, four of my uncles was there and my dad. And like I said, when it comes to my family on my dad's side, they all love women. Love women. I think it's a general generational curse that I have <laughs> inherited because even, even my brother it's the same way, you know. We we love women. I'm not. I'm not even going. I'm not even going to lie. We we love some women. You know what I mean? I, I won't lie to that. I, I, when it comes to my flesh, it it, it moves when I see a, a beautiful woman. I ain't gonna lie, even to this day, right? But now that I know not right from wrong, and I, and I know that attraction isn't a sin, right? The only way I would commit a sin is if I touch that woman or go after that woman. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't let it go, go that far. You know what I mean? Nor will I even flirt. Like, you know what I mean? I wouldn't I wouldn't let uh, temptation set in. So so I know right from wrong. And if I like I said, if I know if I love Jesus, I will keep his commandments. I am, I'm not finna touch. No woman, you know, what I mean, no woman out, you know, other than my wife. So I'm there at this cookout and, you know, everybody's just mingling and dingling. More people are showing up or whatever and, you know, getting ready to eat. And we just, you know, some some, some men are playing uh, dominoes, you know. Like I said, my, 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 my family, they're Jamaican, so they, they're playing dominoes. They're cooking Jamaican food. And we're at my uncle's house now. Like I said, my uncle, he's married, right? This, we're at his house and he's married. His wife is cooking, He's, she's cooking she's in the house cooking or whatever but 
he's there, he's mingling, and he's playing dominoes with his, his friends or whatever. So my other uncle, another uncle of mine shows up, and me and him got to talking, basically. And first we greet each other, but me and him got to talking. And as I'm talking to him, it just seems like, man, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> I remember this this guy, this my my uncle, this this one guy I'm talking about, was married. He was married, had kids. I think he had such a beautiful life. I'm not even gonna lie. He had one of them <laughs> he had one of them 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 American go get a life like, okay, yeah, he got the woman, he got the kids. And he got the home, you know what I'm saying? Like, one of them traditional American life, like, I want that. You know what I mean? Something like that. He had it at one point. But lust got to him. Lust got to this man. Winds up ruining his relationship with his wife. You know, he hardly sees his, I think his kids live down here. He lives in New York. And just, it's just, and that's the thing, that's, that's what lust does. Lust breaks up your 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 family, man. Temptation, all that stuff. Your 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 willing to sin breaks up your your whole entire family. Why? Why? And that's and that's what I don't want. We, at one point, it was getting to that in my in my family. At one point, it was getting there. Right. So we got to talking. He was telling me like, you know what? I you know if I was your it, Man, you must got. This is how the conversation basically start. The lustful conversation started. Basically, he started asking me like, "Man, you must have a lot of women. A lot of women, man. Look at you. Look, at you must have a lot of women." I'm like, "Nah, man. I ain't. I ain't got no no woman. I got one. I don't need women. I just got one woman. That's it. And that's that's all I need." He was like, man. "He was like, well, dang. You know what I mean? You need more women, man. I, I, me? He, he, basically, he was talking about himself. He was like, me." Man, I I gotta have women by my side. I gotta have women. I'm about to go on vacation in Jamaica soon, and I'm going down there with some girl. But I'm gonna have fun down there with the mother girls. I'm like, bro. So I'm like, so I'm started preaching. I started preaching the word of God to him. Like, well, I mean, do you feel that it, that that is right to do that? Because you know, in the Bible says, you know, otherwise. I was telling him that the Bible says otherwise. That. You know, you, if you, I think I said something about, you know, what I mean, if you're trying to trying to burn with or not burn with passion, you should marry. I think that's in, yeah, that's in scripture. If you're trying not to burn with passion or don't want to burn in passion that you shouldn't marry. You know what I'm saying? But you, with you out here fornicating and having many, many a woman like that's not good. I was telling him like how wrong. His mindset is, you know, and then. As the conversation kept going, it seemed like he was kind of backing away or trying to run away. But as he was trying to run away, I was still trying to preach the gospel to him. I was trying to preach to my uncle, who's many years older than me. I'm not even going to lie. He's, I, I believe, like maybe 20 years older than me. And I'm preaching to this, this man uh, about how wrong it is to be fornicating and and spreading yourself thin as you are you know and obviously he's 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 he doesn't want to hear it because he's backing away he's he's literally about to run away but i'm still trying to tell him so he asked me he asked me like well why does why does god why does god trying to tell me what to do why is god trying to tell me what to do why can't i be free and live my life so I'm so I'm telling him like God is letting you live free. You could do whatever you want. He has placed these rules, for, you know what I mean, to t to to tell you right from wrong, of course, but it's up to you to abide by them. You know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's you got free will. But obviously he has placed these rules for a reason. He's all knowing. He he sees what we can't see. Right. And, and it's obvious that we could see the consequences of sin. We could see it, the consequences of spreading ourselves thin and being promiscuous. I could see it because it breaks up marriage. And he is he is the example of that. It breaks up your marriage. It breaks up your home, brings up a happy home, which ha it has done to him. To, to my uncle. 
So he does not see it. He doesn't see it that way, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't believe in in God. He probably believes in God. He just don't want to adhere to 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 God's laws. You know what I'm saying? Which means he doesn't love God, obviously. You know what I mean? So, so that went it went that way, and he kind of walked. He kind of walked off and walked away. Walked away from me as as I was. I think as I was talking, he walked away. He didn't want to hear the gospel. He didn't want to hear the word of God anymore. You know what I'm saying? From from obviously me, who's a younger guy. But I, t to myself, I'm like, why am I even preaching to these men that are older than me, right? So the day, the, the night went on, you know what I'm saying? The night went on and one of my dad's friends, um, who I've, who I've known since, you know what I mean? Since I got down here in Georgia, I've known him since I got down here, you know what I mean? And, and I started talking to him about, you know, the same thing, you know what I mean? And, and basically he was saying, he was asking, he was saying the same thing my uncle was saying about, Man, you must have a lot of women now. You must have. I'm like, bro, is this, is this what they what these men think? That I have a lot of women. Are they serious? I'm not even gonna lie. Um, sometimes I feel like I don't. Even, I, I, sometimes I feel like I shouldn't have no women, or or I should have been a virgin. To this day, I'm not regretting being married right now. I'm not regretting my my family right now. I'm not whatsoever but sometimes i wish i was or didn't have any bodies at this time i wish i i wish i had i only had one i wish i only had one body and that would have been a wife of mine you know what i mean or my wife i wish i only had either one body or none at this time you know what i mean so so my dad's friend we got to talking he was he, obviously he asked the same question man you must have the, you must have a lot of women man you still with that same girl you still that that same girl that you you met from 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 when you used to work i'm like yeah i'm still with her he was like man you man you still a one burner and then my dad kind of chimed in i think man you yeah man he's a one burner one burner so if, if no one knows what a one burner is right and you guys could pull up the definition <laughs> Of what a one burner is, uh, I think most Jamaicans use it. Like I said, my family is Jamaican, but um, uh, what was I getting? Oh yeah, one burner. So one burner is like a uh, what was it, a satire or or insult to any guy that um. It's still with one woman, like you know what I mean. Like it's 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 a joke, but it's also an insult too. Like the Jamaicans will use it like, "Oh, he's a one burner. He's a one burner. Still with the same woman. Still same woman for all these years, man. You a one burner, man." So 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 they use that as an insult to to I guess make you feel bad. I guess they was trying to make me feel bad by them saying it. My dad and and my and his friend. Man, you one burner, one burner, the same woman. And I was like, man, that's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> I was I was laughing with him. I'm like, man, that's how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be with one woman. You shouldn't be out here spreading yourself thin. Um, and I was telling them, I was telling the same thing. I was telling them the same thing I was telling my uncle. Like, look, man, we need to be better than what we are as men. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would never teach my son. I would never teach my son to have many women never and that's how i was brought up with the male figures in my life growing up they would always say man yeah you're, you're gonna have many women you're gonna have look at look how cute he look he's gonna have many women but that's not how it's supposed to be and i would never teach my son that like even to this day i tell him like look you see how me and your and, and my me and your mom is married that's how i want you to be you have one woman one one woman that's it you don't need all these women you don't need all this headache and 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 not to mention the consequences that come with this headache you 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 giving yourself to these women and they may have diseases stds whatever whatever it is you know what i mean even even time time because they're wasting your time and time is very very valuable 
and you're giving yourself to all these women, you're giving away yourself time where you could be working on yourself, could be working on a career, could be working on something that you, you, you'd you love to do or would love to do. You could be spending time with, with your family. You could be doing something productive. But if you're spreading yourself thin because you're drowned in lust and you want to stick your thing here and there and here and there, like that's that's taking your energy, your time. And you're giving yourself up to STDs, diseases, HIV, stuff like that. You're going to reap the consequences of your actions, whatever you do, good or bad. And I believe lust, lusting temptation of the, of, of the flesh is the one of the worst ones. Because you're defiling your body at the same time. Not to mention, is it, you, you, you know, if, if he gets, if my son gets married and he he is in a lustful situation he's going to most likely break up his marriage by his own doing god 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 is not going to do that god is trying to prevent you from doing that so he put these laws in place for a reason and this is what i'm explaining to them my 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 dad and my, his friend or whatever so the night grew on, the night grew on later in, in, in the night. My brother, my other brother from my dad's side, uh, he gets there because he comes late. He, he, he was at work and he gets there uh, late in the night or whatever. But he gets there and and, and like I said, he, he's my younger brother. But when I was preaching the gospel to him, preaching everything to him, tell me why this, this my brother was much more receiving than these these old men I was talking to earlier. Much more receiving, like I'm not I'm not saying my brother was like, okay, yeah, I get it. You know what I mean? I'm gonna do right. I'm not I wasn't saying my, my younger brother was gonna be like, yes. You know what, Daniel? I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna live start living right. I wasn't even expecting that, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time as I was talking to my younger brother, who I know is promiscuous, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? He he smokes and, and, and drinks and all that stuff. He was more receiving as far as listening. He was like, wow, Dan, you speaking facts right now. You speaking truth. Like you should be your own, you should be your preacher or something. Like, you know what I mean? Like you you are educated. I was like, man, you know what? I've been studying for a while. I'm not I'm not I'm nowhere near being the best uh Bible pre or anything, like the Bible theologian or whatever. I'm still learning myself, but I know as when it comes to fornication and lust and temptation of the flesh, I know what's, I know what's right from wrong. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? He was like, man, yo, I get it. I don't understand it. You know what I mean? So my younger brother was much more receiving than these young men. He would, my brother didn't run away at all. These other men were running away. These older men were running away. Not, and I get it because they've been in their sin for all these years. So, boom, that happened. I, I, I was talking to my younger brother on that. But then while I was talking to my younger brother, my uncle, my other uncle, who house we was at, you know, what I mean, it was it was his house. Remember, I told you earlier that his wife was cooking uh, or cooked the food that we uh, that we was eating. And we at his house. Right. But so so as I'm talking to my younger brother. My uncle of the house. <laughs> He walks up and and greets me. Obviously, he was playing the dang dominoes the whole night and really didn't greet nobody. But <laughs> later in the night, he I guess he finished playing the domino game with his friends. And he walks up and starts talking to me. He was like, man, he see, and, and it's crazy. They, they say the same thing. They said the same thing. He said the same thing. It was like, man, how much woman you got now? I'm like, bro, <laughs> I was like, man, I only got one woman, one woman. And I didn't even go on to explaining everything I said to, uh, to my uh, family earlier to my uncle now. I didn't even go on to explaining everything. But he was like, man, how old are you now? I was like, I'm 30. I'm 35. So I was 35. So he was like, man, at, 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 my, at that age, when I was 35, no woman could tell me nothing. I had, I had enough women, enough women. That's how he talk. He talk, he talk fast on them Jamaicans that talk fast. He was like, enough women. I have enough women. No woman could tell me. So I had, a, I had to figure out, right, 
I had to figure something out. I had, like, <laughs> I had to do some math or whatever. I actually did it earlier, too, this today. I had to figure out the math, right? If he's telling me that at age 35, that no woman can tell him nothing. No woman can tell me nothing. I had enough women. No woman can tell me nothing that I can not have more than one woman. So I had to do the math. And like I said, he's married, right? If he's, and I'm not saying, I, I don't know the age of my uncle, but I'm guessing on a ballpark, he's around 60. Maybe he's 65. Maybe. But I'm going to say 60 because, it, you know, some Jamaicans, they be old, but they don't look it, right? But I'm going to say he's 60. So let's say 30 years ago or 25 years ago, let's say he's 65, but 30 years ago, he would have been 30 years old, right? Right? So in that space and time, I know that his older son was older than me. So at that time, I knew that his older son would have been conceived at that time around 30 30 35 years old so i kind of like did the math i'm like okay so he had to been married at this time he had to been because his son is his older son is older than me probably about maybe seven years i would say maybe eight years right so i did the math and i'm like i know it's kind of confusing just listen to what i'm saying right now but i did the math I'm like, OK, yeah, he had to been married at this time between 30 and 35. For him to even, you know, for him, for him to even conceive his oldest child. So at that time, at 35, he's married and he's telling me that at age 35, that no woman could tell him that he shouldn't mess around with no other woman. That means he was married at the time. So I'm like, so I told him like, unk, unk, please, man, don't, don't do that to your wife, please. Exactly what I, the words, exactly what I said, uncle, un, un, uncle, please don't do that. Don't, don't do that to your wife. Please don't do that to your wife. Exact words I said, and I left it at that. You know what I mean? And he wound up walking off and, you know, I guess that, that was the night. Like we end the night. Everything was cordial. We left. I, I left. And everything was cordial. So, 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 where, where I'm getting that? I'm getting that to the fact that man, I, it, 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 it's kind of, it's kind of, it kind of sucks that you know we, we're living in sin, right? You know, what I mean, l l kudos to Adam and Eve for for making that happen. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but I believe as human beings, right. We have a choice. God has given us free will. He has written his laws, no doubt, right? It's in it's in the good book, right? But we he has given us a choice. Now, if if something goes wrong, if you if you if you know the law, if you know his commandments, and you still doing your dirt or you still living in your filth then you you must surely know that you're going to reap the consequences of your of that action of of your sin. You're going to have to reap the consequences. Now you cannot go back and say why God why God this and why God that when he told you straight up and straight down what you shouldn't do. Why why does God allow me to suffer this way? Why am I burning down there? All this suffering and pain, but he just told you not to do that, and you still going to do that like, <laughs> throughout the whole Bible, right? Oh, and, now, and now you know why such and such is happening. Now you're on child support because now you didn't have a baby by someone outside of marriage, outside of your, your immediate marriage, right? You got to run, run and duck and hide now. You live in a double life, possibly, trying to hide a baby from your supposed, your wife, your current wife. You're hiding a baby of, of someone else that you had committed fornication with, that you have committed adultery with. Now you got to hide this or, or, or run and duck and hide. 
and and now now you're on child support possibly you're on child support now because you didn't want to you know you want to keep your thing in there you know what i mean you you got to control that thing man there, there's a way to control it if you love jesus if you love god you wouldn't do those things you will keep my commandments if you love me you will keep my commandments right well obviously you don't love jesus or you don't love the lord and i know it's hard because the lust of the flesh is 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 one of them things that man it's tough i i even to, to this day even i go through it but i have to i have in my mind i have to create strategies in order to come combat it i have to i have to get rid of the lustful thoughts i have to to stop watching the sites, the porn, the porn, the pornography, all that stuff that triggers me. I got to stop fueling this lust, lustful of the appetite. Right? Because if you fuel it, then, you know what I mean? Then you're going to be worse off, right? <laughs> you're going to be worse off. But you got to keep in the word because the word is, 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 is like, like a sword. It's like a sword. You're in the word. You, you know what's right from wrong. And most people, they go to church. The thing is, I don't go to church. I don't go to church at all. This is not me boasting. I don't go to church at all, but most people that go to church are, they, they don't know right from wrong. They call themselves Christians, but they really not, man, because they, they call themselves Christian because they just go to church on Sunday. But you got to be immersed in yourself in the Christ, in the blood of Christ, in the blood of Jesus that he has sacrificed himself for you, for your sins, for you not to live in sin anymore. Because you love him, you would, n you would not live in sin anymore because the Christ is in you. Right? And I know we talk about grace and all that stuff, and 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 we only say by the grace of God, the grace of, of the Lord. But we shouldn't abuse it. We shouldn't abuse it at all. Because once saved isn't always saved. You will be judged. You will be judged on that day, on judgment day. You will be judged. So if you don't love Jesus, obviously you can't call yourself a follower of Jesus. And, you, and basically you, you're you not putting your faith in Jesus either because you're only saved by putting your faith in Jesus. Right. You're saved by putting your your faith in Jesus Christ, that he is your Lord. Right. So if you're not adhering to his commands, then you don't love the Lord. You don't love Jesus which means you don't have faith in Jesus, right? So, so one burner, right? One burner. You know what? I'm glad I am a one burner. I, I kid you not. I, I am. No, no doubt. I, I'm glad. Because when I was doing those things, you know what I mean? Not too long ago, about a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, 2015, 2016 was the worst years I was in my sin. I, I will never forget it. 2015, 2016, 2017, those were the worst years I was in my sin. I will never forget it. You know what I mean? And I'm glad I'm at this place right now where I'm trying to change. I'm, I'm changing. You know what I'm saying? And I can feel my flesh trying to revert back to itself. I can feel my flirtatious lust trying to come back. But I got I got to reroute it to doing something else. You know what I mean? Doing something better, something fruitful for the Lord. Right? And I'm working on it each and every day. I ain't perfect at all. N not whatsoever. I'm not perfect. I'm trying to be better than yesterday. I'm trying. I'm trying to be better than an hour ago. <laughs> I kid you not. I 
kid you not. I'm trying to be better than what I was a year ago, two years ago, three years ago in, in, in Christ, in the Lord, in my Savior. I'm trying to be Jesus-like. Not trying to be Jesus. You know, I would love to start healing people and, and raising the dead, stuff like that. But obviously I can't do that. You know what I mean? But I'm trying to be Jesus-like. I'm trying to be pure. I'm trying to be sanctified by the blood of Christ. Pure in, in the Lord's, in, in the Father's eyes. Now, am I pure just by doing works, actions, and stuff like that? I'm pretty sure I'm not. But if I know his commandments, his laws, why would I even break them? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I know the con I, I would know the consequences afterwards. I would know that if I touch another female other than my wife, that this female may be crazy. She may be crazy. You know what I mean? I'm taking a risk right there. One, she may be crazy. She may fall in love, which will even make her more crazy. I may slip up and have a baby with her, which will definitely destroy my relationship with my family, my wife, that I have a, a baby outside of my marriage. That's three. Uh, possibly getting into child support. That's four. I ain't got money like that for me spending. Like, I don't even like to spend money for me to get into child support. I don't even like to spend money like that. You know what I'm saying? I like to save money. But if I'm giving my money away to some other female off a, off a, a one night stand, how does that help me in my, in my household by putting, by, by taking the money out of my household? That's child support right there. Boom. Not to mention, heck, I want to retire eventually. That's taking money out of my retirement funds. You know what I mean? Like, uh, or anything that I want to save up for. I'm taking money out of my, you know what I mean? Not to mention the dang government taking money out of my account. Now I have this female taking whoever out of my account for a one night stand. That's the consequences that you got to deal with. Right. But you don't you, when you're in that lustful passion, you ain't thinking about the future. You're thinking about the nut, that cashew, the, the pistachio. <laughs> right. So. So, yeah, you got to you got to the thing is, you got to think about the future. You got to think about the consequences of your action. I think in the. um. I said something um, in a video, I think, that I posted earlier this year. I think something about where I had dropped a fork or a spoon, a plastic fork and a spoon, right? I dropped the, I was reaching for a plastic fork and a spoon, right? Uh, and as I was reaching for a plastic fork and a spoon, I was in the pantry, as I was reaching for this plastic fork and a spoon, another plastic fork or a spoon, I forget which, what it was. The other one winds up dropping on the floor, right? In front of the doorway where the garage door opens, right? So I, so I look down like, man, I ain't about to pick that up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To, to me in my head, I was like, man, I ain't about to pick that up, man. I ain't got time. I got I to gotta, I gotta go. You know what I mean? So I had to stop myself right then and there and be like, Okay, stop and think. If I leave that f fork or a spoon in front of that doorway, someone may be coming, which most likely will be my wife, because my wife, she uses the garage. She, she parks the car in the garage, and she opens the door all the time uh, to the garage doorway. She, she comes in through the, through, the pan through, through the kitchen, past the pantry. So I'm like thinking to myself, like, if I leave that fork or a spoon in that doorway, most likely my wife is going to come in, possibly trip on this this utensil, plastic utensil, and maybe fall and hit her head. That's on me. I had to stop myself and think, like, because of my ignorancy, I would have left that there. 
and came home and my wife could have been you yeah, know in a coma or something or or even worse she could have been concussed all because of my action so I had to stop and think like man I have to think about the fu- the future you know what I mean and I'm I'm not the one I, I don't have I'm not an advocate of reminiscing on the future because if you reminisce on the future and you constantly think about what's to come or what's to happen then you just, that's going to make you crazy I'm talking about just thinking about the consequences when it comes to the future think about the consequences when it comes to the future what 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 if i do this thing what is going to happen afterward you know what i'm saying what's going to happen what's going to be either the immediate action or what's going to happen long term after i do this thing because whether you plant a seed or not whether you plant a good seed or bad seed you're going to get something out of it right <laughs> If you plant a bad, you plant a bad seed, you're gonna either not get nothing, or you're gonna get weeds or something. If you plant a good seed, then you're gonna get something good, right? So if I if I left that utensil there, most likely something bad is gonna happen, right? Or would have happened. Hey, maybe she not she she might have missed it. Maybe she might have missed it, but there's a possibility that. Leave me leaving that utensil on the ground was going to lead to something very, very bad, a bad consequences. And that that is what I don't want. Right. So I picked up the uh, you picked up the utensil and, and uh, threw it away or whatever. I, I forget what I did with it, but I, I, I moved it from where the walkway was because I thought about the future. I thought about the consequence, I would say. And that's how I want our men, us men, to think about when it comes to our lustful nature. Right? Our, our lust, our, 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 the way we think when it comes to our, our lustful nature. So no man, if you're single, right? No man shouldn't be, none of you men should be trying to bag a woman or, or, or smash a woman or whatever you want to call it. Without being married first. No. That's 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 wrong in the Lord's eyes. That's a sin. So if you're single and you're looking you're looking to court a woman, go ahead and court her, but be prepared to marry her first before you even lay with her. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not against dating. Go ahead and date. But when it comes to having sex before marriage, no. None whatsoever. Because that's against the eyes, that's against the laws of of God. Obviously, he has put that there for a reason, that you shouldn't marry a woman. Right? So that's, that's where I'm at, man. That's, that's... That's where I'm at on this whole thing. Um, my guys, don't let nobody pressure you into having more than one woman. Don't you know if they call you a one burn a one burner? I'm on a one burner. If they call you a one burner, man. So what? I, you man, you in a, you in the best place right now. You in a good spot. You in a good place. You know what I mean? Hell, if you single and you didn't know anybody, you a virgin. You were pure. You are pure. You, you didn't know any woman. I wish I was there sometimes. I wish I was there. I'm not regretting my current life, but sometimes I wish I was there. I wish I didn't know anybody. I wish I didn't lay with anyone. I wish I was pure and then sanctified. Hmm. I know now, right? <laughs> Nothing I could do about it, but but you in a good place. If you a virgin, you in a good place, man. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. You in a good place, and if you don't want to give it up, then then so be it. You in a good spot, and that goes out to my woman too. If you a virgin, don't don't give it up until you're ready, until until marriage. 
till you find that one person find that person that you want like you know what i mean like i'm dead serious like whatever you feel like is the best person for you find that person man so yeah that's why that's where i'm at man i think i'm running out of ideas and thoughts right now i don't know but um i think i said enough yeah so this is uh daniel your host of notice tv putting you guys on notice giving you guys the news i see you guys later <laughs>